My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 1,911 subscribers in over 75 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transmitted to any party outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Today we're going to be continuing on with this catalog item, which was created in the previous video. We're going to be creating a new user record on the sys user table from this SC or catalog request. And as you can see here, I have some uh, variables which I've filled out. So we have a username here, or first name of Tim, last name Apple. Uh, we have cell phone, email address. You'll remember this Aspen description from the previous video where we pushed multiple variables to the description field on the uh, requested item table. Then we have street, city, state, zip code, and so on. And when I click order now, or when Tim Apple does, you'll see a congrats on creating an Aspen account, Tim Apple. Um, and then we have a request number right here. I'll just go back real quick, just in case there's some things that need to be explained later on in this video. And now I navigate to the sys user table, and I'm going to go ahead and click refresh. And you'll see there are a couple other ones um, that were created also. Uh, one key to this solution, which I'm sure would come up would or a question that would come up would be like, how do how are we supposed to know which records are created by users and which ones are created internally by us or pulled from Active Directory or however your organization has it set up? Great question. Um, one thing I added was this field right here called created from catalog request, which also has a corresponding variable uh, within the variable set in the item. So, and here's our item that we talked about in the last video, Aspen contact info. When we click into it, we'll go down here. We'll see we have a variable set called Aspen. And now when we go into the variable set, we'll see here there are 10 variables. And then this is the one that I just mentioned, created from catalog request. And we have a UI policy called hide fields. And what that is doing is hiding um, the field. I think it's actually called hide variables. I had to change it because I didn't want to confuse you on that. So just make sure you understand that distinction that when we're talking catalog, they're variables. When we're talking all the applications uh, that are in the, um, the filter navigator. So when we go here, this is our filter nav, all this stuff. The majority of it. I mean, there is uh, there are some catalog um, options too, but when you go to a table here, that's going to be referred to as a field. So just make sure you understand that distinction. Here's our variable. It's called created from catalog request. And what I did was I just made it easy. I hit it, and then I gave it a default value of created from catalog request. So that way, when we come to the sys user table, then we want to know okay. Um, who has created one from a catalog request, uh, we can filter on that value. Because basically what's happening is all this, all those fields, excuse me, variables are being pushed to the fields on the sys user table. Okay, so then here's our uh, corresponding fields called created from catalog request. And one thing you'll see here is this U underscore, and then basically it's the same name and there is no default value for this one because we want to receive it from uh, the catalog request and have a push into there so um, this is left blank for this solution here and then here's our hide variables variable sets um, UI policy and it's pretty simple nothing happening here with, with conditions we're just saying hide it all the time basically create from catalog requests and then visible is false and then all the other stuff we don't fill out if we also wanted to make sure that on the requested item that it didn't display um, we could check this box and then it won't display there now this is the main event like what you know like how did you make this happen right okay so uh, we have our when to run when the item is Aspen contact info here's our script Okay, so uh, this looks like pretty much your basic uh, business rule advanced script. Uh, we have our variable called new user. And then we'll see here all these columns say new user. We're doing a glide record on the sys user table. Then we're doing this new user dot initialize, right? So then we have here new user dot set value. And then 
pretty much we'll just say, okay, what is the name on the table that we're trying to go to, which is sys user, first name, and then we're saying, okay, current dot variables dot first name, and we'll notice here our table is sys rec item. Even though we don't have any fields built out here, we can still push the variables straight to the sys user table, and then have that that user profile created. And we don't need, need to have any sort of manual process there. Now you will notice one thing is that um, I didn't include the user ID um, because may, you know some organizations they want to do that themselves. They, they have a specific naming convention for how they do user ID, and maybe this isn't going to be totally 100% consumer facing. Um, like if you're buying tickets to I don't know any sports league out there, um, NBA comes to mind. You know, if you're buying tickets out there, maybe you want to let the user create their own user ID and allow you know own, their own passwords and all that type of stuff. So this is more of an internal solution where you know, like, yeah, great, the sys user profile was created, but we want to have some authority over like what the temp password is, and then also what their user ID is going to look like going forward. And you know, you could add those here too if you want to add those line items, and then build out the variables on the uh, the front end. And then have them shoot to the uh, the sys user table, and then it finishes with a new user dot insert. And one thing that if you're an experienced admin, you're probably familiar with this business rule is create primary email device, which it would come up with this message that said originally create primary email device, but because the business rule pops up on the confirmation screen. Um, I just put in a message like, hey, create, you know, congrats on creating an Aspen account and then current.name, which I left in place. So all this comes from um, pretty much the business rule, except I just changed the message a little bit. And then one thing I did was, and it's not complete yet, but I wanted to make sure that um, two users with the, the same cell phone couldn't be created. And it, it does push the request forward, but it does prevent the user from being created. So what I did was I put in like Tim A. Apple um, and then the cell phone. If it was the same, I put in this this business rule to say, and I'll show that maybe in a future video for, um, you know, if a user with this phone number already exists, so it's not going to create a new record. So if we do a refresh here, you know, we won't see two with the same phone. And why did I do it on phone? I just think it's harder to to create a new phone number. I know you can go out there and get like a Google number or something like that, but but people are really tied to their cell phones um, and it seems like they don't want to manage too many phone numbers. Like email addresses, for some reason, people go out there and make a million of them, um, at least in my opinion, but you know, that, that's up for debate, right? Um, but I wanted to tie it to the phone. So it also works on the back end too. So if we were trying to make another one um, with the same phone number, it wouldn't permit us to. And uh, you know, the the request, yes, it did go forward um, and did create a request, but it didn't allow them to create this as user profile. So maybe in a future video, I'll show you how to prevent the the creation of the request. But for right now, I'm just satisfied with uh, the new sys user profile record not being created. So if you liked the content that you saw, just uh, feel free to go ahead and click like uh, somewhere, I guess, down there. I don't, I don't know where it is exactly, but... Uh, um, you can go ahead and click like down there. And if you're a new user um, or viewer uh, to this channel and you, you want to go ahead and facilitate that transfer of knowledge to people who need it most, go ahead and click subscribe. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.